once again. He said it's because they get so much press, press because of the exposure. The TV exposure. I'm just, I, I just had to shake my head. But you know what? I give the man credit. I give the brother credit because he can sit up there without batting an eye and give you an answer. Just that quick. He makes $2 million a year, which is far less than most big-time basketball, college basketball and football coaches. Has his own little jet in living the high life. Off, once again, the sweat off of collegiate basketball and football players. Well, babe, what about the tennis player? That tennis player ain't going out there getting hurt. He ain't getting hurt, hit by 300, 320 pound offensive defensive lineman. People say, well, basketball, why don't the basketball players have the same rules that the NFL players have? Why can't why can't they move that age up to 21 like the football player? Big difference. You have to be 19, play one year of one year be one year removed from high school to enter the NBA draft. But there's a big difference. I think that's three years removed from your high school graduation in order to enter the NFL draft. The big difference is people will say, well, I don't see why they're doing this for football and not that for basketball. Big difference. The big difference is basketball. People will say football is a contact sport. No, basketball is a contact sport. Football is a collision sport. Once again, Basketball is a contact sport. Football is a collision sport. Get it right. Continue to enjoy your morning coffee with Babe Tom Herman, and I'll be right back after this brief message from our sponsor. If you're looking for affordable health and insurance coverage, well, then give Jonna Carolla of the Roland Group a call. She's here to serve families, individuals, and small businesses. Contact her at 919-719-7211 or at 919-539-9000. Once again, contact Jonica Roland of the Roland Group. Welcome back, and remember, that's Jonica Rowland, R-O-W-L-A-N-D, of the Rowland Group. Now, briefly before the break, I was talking about the so-called student-athlete, the term that the NCAA loves to always showboat around, the commercials. All these people will be entering the athletes. Student-athletes will enter another world of professional sports. Yet you have nothing to motivate an underclassman to go and complete his college education prior to entering the draft. I think that's a bunch of nonsense. Now on the local end, um, just to refresh your memory, most of you know, Harrison Barnes, in addition to Austin Rivers, have entered their name in this year's NBA draft along with Kendall Marshall and John Henson, all three of those at UNC. Now, C.J. Leslie from NC State, him along with several other, including all of Kentucky, projected six underclassmen are keeping the NBA's date, or rather the NBA's deadline, the April 29th date, to enter your name, or the player has that date to enter their name. Wish it was, B, with all that money, but enter their names in the 2012 NBA draft. Now, some people got confused this year, and it also confused me. There was two dates set for that deadline. One, of course, was set by the NCAA of April 10th. And the NBA said, no, we keep an eyes at April 29th. And really, to be honest, coaches caused this one. You know, come on. You know, they say the academics know us. The truth is the coaches spearheaded this, the majority of coaches, not all who spearheaded the proposal for the early deadline. Basically, they grew tired of not owning a tighter grasp, power, on what their roster might look like the following season. They were tired of basically losing a star player more in the summer, tired of having to field major roles that they didn't anticipate. And this 
you know, notable, noticeably that, that killed a lot of programs. I think it got Carolina. So Roy Williams wanted this one because look what happened to him after the 2009 season. After he had so many players leave um, early for the draft, it dismantled his team. The next year, they went to an NIT team. So, of course, he's one that pushed for it. And in defense to Roy, most of all Atlanta Coast Conference men's basketball coaches or men's basketball coaches push for what is known as NCAA Proposition 2010-24, the statute that mandates underclassmen who have declared for the NBA draft to withdraw their names by a certain date, which this year was April 10th, compared to the NBA's deadline of April the 29th. Now, of local interest, you have Mason Plumley, who made his decision a couple of days ago to remain at Duke for his senior year. It's something to cheer about if you're a Duke fan. But remember, technically, he still can come up next week or before April the 29th and say, you know what? I made a mistake. I'm entering, entering my name in the draft. And there's nothing the NCAA or the coaches can do. Now, you have on one end, you have C.J. Leslie from NC State, and you have at least seven or eight other players, in particular the majority of those from the University of Kentucky's national championship team, who are waiting until the April 29th deadline. Rightfully so, because they want to make an informed decision. They don't want to be rushed in to a decision. They want to make an informed decision, take, the, take their time to breathe and make a decision. A good, educated decision. I told you some coaches didn't agree with this rule. I'm going to quote to you the former coach of the Michigan Fab Five, the current coach of the San Diego of San Diego State, Steve Fisher. I'm going to quote to you what he recently told the San Diego Union Tribune. He says that it's a bad rule in my opinion. They screw the kids. We know who they are. They is... The NCAA. Sorry about the bad language. Sorry about the bad language, but they are the NCAA. That's who he's talking about. This is an awful, in my opinion, this is an awful rule. And this is me, not him. I don't want him coming back suing me. I'm saying it's a terrible rule in place. And one that I'm probably, you're going to probably see adjusted over the next few years. You might know you're still coming back, but let them sweat it out. Also, I'd like to wish... Deshaun Painter and also Jaquan Raymond both have requested and received release of their scholarships from North Carolina State University. Um, I do, from what I'm reading, reports that Painter does have um, someone in his family, immediate family, is seriously ill and he wished to be closer to home. Most reports are saying Old Dominion will be his choice, but then again, you know, you never know. Um, certainly with uh, Jaquan, there is um, Rodney Purvis coming in. And Jaquan is 6'4", 195 pounds, almost the same size as uh, Rodney Purvis. So I guess he saw that as, uh, you know, going into his, getting into his um, playing time somewhat. He didn't play much this year, but what I did notice by in from both uh, Jaquan and Raymond is that the good spirit, the good attitude he kept motivating his teammates um, as a reserve. And and Deshaun Painter as well. Deshaun played a very vital role, especially when C.J. Leslie had to miss a few games early in the season. Um, Painter, 6'9", 227, a junior, will be a senior. And probably with the release for immediate family illness, he probably does not have to um, sit out one season. So I do wish these men the best of luck in their future endeavors. Once again, <laughs> once again, my time is up, and I did have a great time today. I hope you enjoyed your morning coffee with Babe Tom Herman, and please feel free to join us each and every Saturday morning at 7.30 a.m. on this fine radio station. Also, please remember to follow me on Twitter, at Babe Tom Herman. Also, remember Babe Tom Herman channel on YouTube. If you need to contact me directly, please feel free to send an email at Babe Tom Herman, or better yet, I'm sorry. Babe Tom Herman at Yahoo.com. Once again, that's Babe Tom Herman at Yahoo.com. 
So keep enjoying the rest of your coffee as well as your day. You're listening to Power 750 WAUG and online at power750.com.